In his speech, Mr Leong said that the middle income in Singapore are, I quote, already overtaxed relative to their income. I think the facts and figures speak for themselves. What Mr Leong said is an outright falsehood. The DPM said that I have said an outright falsehood. I categorically reject that. And I will ask him a few questions to demonstrate that he has been trying to pull wool over our eyes. Firstly, the first question I want to ask, the DPM said that the middle class Singaporeans are not overtaxed and show the benefit tax ratio as a proof. Can I ask whether the DPM has factored in BTO subsidies and land cost in the equation? If the land cost is not considered a tax, but the subsidies given to BTO is considered a benefit, it is no wonder that the benefit tax ratio turns out to be very favourable for middle class Singaporeans. But that does not reflect the true picture. The second question I want to ask, the DPM has always said that the NIRC is money that we can spend as revenue. After having gotten us agree to not touching the reserves and ploughing back 50% of the net investment return to the, net reserve, to the reserves, then if the NRIC now is not spent, when most of it is being tucked away in endowment and trust fund issue, how can you say that that money is being spent? Because it will only be spent very slowly into the future. So can the DPM share with us how much NIRC has been tucked away in total to date? and what percentage of debt we spend every year. It is even more insidious when the government on one hand tuck away all these revenues and then tell Singaporeans that we have not enough fiscal resources. As a result, I need to raise GST and other taxes. Third question. The DPM said, that the total revenue, our total expenditure in 2023 cannot come down. It has to stay at $100 billion because, and that's despite the end of the pandemic, because of the effect of nominal GDP growth, which I think that's what his chart shows. Can I confirm with the DPM that nominal GDP growth had indeed increased by 33%? from 2019 to 2023, which is exactly that increase in expenditure from 2019 to 2023, from 75 billion to 100 billion. That is 33%. Has our nominal GDP grown by that amount over the last three years? And also, the minister, if, uh, sorry, the DPM, if the DPM, what the DPM says is correct, then I would expect the $25 billion increase in expenditure to be spread uniformly across the ministry. But you will look at the $25 billion difference between 2019 and 2023, actually the increases were lump up in mainly three ministries, MOH, MND, and MINDEF. Can the DPM explain that? Lastly, last question. In his obsession with the reserves, this government has actually lost its bearing. Can I ask the DPM, how can the affordable home scheme, as proposed by PSP, which guarantees every Singaporean of each generation an affordable HDB flat, because he only paid the construction cost. How can, the, how can that be less equitable to the current BTO system where future generations of Singaporeans will have to worry about how high 
the BTO prices will go. So given that I think we have not exhausted debating about the two schemes, BTO schemes and the affordable home scheme, in the sake of time, I will not go too much into that, but I hope the government will consider our proposals carefully because there are overwhelming advantages in the affordable home scheme versus the BTO scheme. Thank you. DPM Wong. So on the burden of the middle class and why I had said Mr. Leong's remarks that the middle class were overtaxed was an outright falsehood, I did not rely on tax benefits per se. I highlighted, if you look at the tax on the middle income household, 10% of income, total taxes that they pay. How is that more? And then if you say, well, 10% is more, then let's look at other countries. And I showed the chart. So I rest my case. I don't want to elaborate further or get into a toing and froing with Mr. Leong. The facts and figures, as I said in my speech, I think speak amply for themselves. On the NIRC and whether there's excess NIRC, never mind the argument that we've made before that it's not about NIRC, it's about revenues all coming together in the consolidated fund, but Mr. Leong insists on not taking, <laughs> recognizing this, so he specifically says there's excess NIRC because of fund top-ups. I actually had a whole treatment on that in my remarks. Maybe Mr. Leong wasn't paying attention, so again, I should not belabor the point because I have already said in my remarks that fund top-ups are not all spent in the future. A considerable number of them have are drawdown funds, funds for which the monies are needed today and on an ongoing basis. So there is no slack there either. On government expenditure rising and in nominal terms, how far it has gone, um, I, I mean, again, the facts are straightforward. You can look at where we are today as a share of GDP. By all means, go to DOS's uh, website, check where the nominal GDP figures are, match expenditures today and expenditures uh, in 2019. Expenditures have risen, but as a share of GDP, they have not. Why have expenditures risen? It's not just because of a growing GDP, it's inflation, nominal spending goes up, in salaries have to cost more. So that's quite obvious, isn't it? I mean, if you were to keep spending at in real terms, then how do you pay more for salaries? How do you pay more for projects, all of which cost more money? But what's important is to track spending as a share of GDP. And as I mentioned, it has maintained at the same ratio over 2019 and today. On public housing, I really don't want to get into a debate on that because we've gone through that extensively before. We as I mentioned in, my, uh, in, in the exchanges just now, the government welcomes all ideas. We look at them seriously, we study them. We've studied Mr. Leong's and the PSP's proposal on af affordable housing. Our assessment is that this is clearly a rate on the reserves. It will not be good for Singapore and Singaporeans. Um, and that's our conclusion. In the end, Singaporeans can judge for themselves. Point of order, sir. Point of order. Uh, I'm not asking new questions, but the DPM did not answer any of my four questions. Can I just request that he answer two questions? I'll take care of the other two at the COS. Mr. Leong, uh, I listened to your clarifications quite carefully. I think they amounted to four or five. Uh, we've ended with the Leader of the Opposition, and we have gone for more than an hour of clarifications. So. It is the decision of the chair that the question will be put to the House. Thank you.